So now we're going to be going to chapter one, lesson four, powers of 10 and exponents. And you can see that the common core standard is really focusing on understanding the place value system. So this lesson is going to relate more to lessons one and two than um, lesson three, where we're doing properties. And we're going to be remembering the um, different forms. So we talked about expanded form, um, standard form, and word form. Now we're going to be looking at exponent form and word form. Um, and this would be slightly different, but similar in concept. I'm going to start with something that's not truly a form, so I'm going to put in parent, uh, in quotation marks, and I'm going to call it an equation form. Now, this is not a technical term. Um, you won't be asked to find the equation form of something. But um, what I mean by that is when I'm saying 10 times 10 times 10. So when you're just multiplying with an equation. And from the equation we're going to try to do something called exponent form. Now the exponent form is going to be based on the number 10. Exponent form can be derived by seeing how many place values you'll need. One, two, three, because there are three zeros. So this is going to be 10 to the third. And this is right here called the exponent, the small number. So the large number, the base number is 10 because that's the number that we're repeating. And the small number is the exponent and that's how many times we're repeating it when we're multiplying. So you can see that the base number is 10, 10 is being repeated, 10, 10, 10. And then we're repeating it one, two, three times, three place values of 10. So this is the third power of 10. Um, your grown up might be uh, saying this the way that I used to say it, which is 10 to the third power. But um, if, you know, every time I look at the answer key and the way that they word it, oftentimes um, now I see it more as the third power of 10. The next form that I want to go to is the standard form. And standard form looks just like a number. So if we were to multiply this out, what would we get? And if we're to multiply it out, we don't actually have to go to the side and do 10 times 10 and regroup and all that because we could just see the base numbers, not the base numbers, but the main numbers, which are 1, 1, 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and we're going to count the zeros. There's 1, 2, 3, so we're going to add three zeros. 1, 2, 3. And so this is our answer. Another way to do that is to say, hey, the exponent says three, there's gonna be three zeros. Now to find out what number this is, we'll go to the right and count one, two, three, comma, because this is one period. So this is the ones period and this is the thousands period, and this is the ones, tens, hundred. So you can see that this number is 1,000, which will help because the last form that we're gonna be doing is word form. And for word form, it's going to be interesting because I'm going to put two answers. I can say both the third power of 10 as my word form, the third power of 10, but I could also say 1000. And I would like you to put both answers for word form. 10 times 10 times 10 is equivalent to 10 to the third power or the third power of 10. It's also equivalent to 1,000. The third power of 10 or 1,000. These are all the same number. And let's try another example. Let's try 10 times 10. So if we have 10 times 10, We'll circle the main numbers, one and one. One times one, oops, I'm gonna do standard form first, is one. And we have one, two zeros. One, two zeros. Keep in mind we start on the right side and then we'll add our commas if needed. One, two, three, this is where we'll put a comma, but since there's no number in front of it, um, it's still one period. 
There are three numbers and it's just one period and the answer is 100. The exponent of this will be based on the number 10 and how many zeros it has. It has one, two zeros. Another way to say that is the number 10, the base 10, is being repeated one, two times. The exponent is two. So you count the zeros, one, two, one, two, and that will be the same number. 10 times 10 is 10 with um, as the base and two as the exponent, and it's the same as 100. In terms of the word form, the, what number is over here? It's two, so the second power of 10. The second power of 10 or 100. 10 times 10 has two zeros, 10 um, to the second or the second power of 10, and it has two zeros. Let's try another one. This one's gonna be a little bit more complicated. 100 times 100. Let's count how many zeros we have. Here's our base number, one, one. We have one, two, three, four. And so it's gonna be 10 to the fourth or the fourth power of 10. One, two, three, four zeros means there's gonna be a small four up here. One, one. If we're doing the standard form, one times one is one, and we're going to add one, two, three, four zeros. One, two, three, four zeros. To do our comma, we start on the right side and we count three, because every three, it's a new period. Ones, tens, hundreds. One, two, three, comma. So here's the ones period, and here's the thousands period. One, two, and since we don't have a third number, that's our number. This is ten, this, the fourth power of 10, because four is a small number. The fourth power of 10, or 10,000. And I know this is 10,000 because ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10,000, 10,000. So 100 times 100 has one, two, three, four zeros. That's why the exponent is four. 10 to the fourth is one with one, two, three, four zeros. And then we count one, two, three, comma, one, two, and then one in the commas, 10,000. The fourth power of 10 or 10,000. Let's try another example. Let's try eight times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Oh my goodness, Ms. Valentina, that's way too many tens. I don't want to write that all out. Well, you don't have to go eight. Let me see if I have scratch paper somewhere. It's not like I'm asking you, I'll just use the side of this, to do eight times 10 is 80 times 10, zero, zero, placeholder zero, blah, 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 times 10 times 10 again. Let's think about this. This is eight and nothing's gonna change that eight really. Eight times one, times one, times one, times one, times one. So it's gonna be eight times and then we're gonna have our base 10 here. The eight's not really gonna change. We can't get rid of that eight. So it'll be eight times 10 to how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four, five. So our small exponent is gonna be five. Eight, which we're not gonna be able to get rid of, that's gonna be our, um, that's, that value is very important, times one, two, three, four, five tens, 10 to the fifth, or the fifth power of 10. Or in other words, one, two, three, four, five zeros, 10. Eight times 10 to the fifth or the fifth power of 10. And what we're gonna do is eight times one is eight, and there will be five zeros. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's eight times one is eight, and there will be five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Eight times one is eight, and there'll be five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. This is our final answer. We do have to find out what the periods are. Ones, tens, ones, tens, hundreds, comma. Ones, tens, hundreds, comma, but we don't need any more. Here are the one periods and the thousands period. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousand. So this number is eight hundred thousand. So 800,000, oops, I forgot to just switch color so it doesn't blend like it does here. 800,000. Um, I don't know if the how to say it in terms of the fourth power of 10 or whatnot, but I would say eight times the fifth power of 10 maybe, um, if I want to follow the same format for above. So maybe eight times the fifth power of 10. I'm gonna switch from pens this time so it doesn't bleed through like it does here. And let's do two more. Let's try 15 times 10 times 10. 15 times 10 times 10 is 15 times we have 1, 2, so 10 to the second or the second power of 10. 15 times 10 to the second power of 10. The 15 doesn't go anywhere. That's going to be our base number. 15. And we're going to add two zeros because that's our exponent. 1, 2. So we have our 15. That's our main number. And then we had two zeros. Our exponent is 2. We add two zeros. And from here we go ones, tens, hundreds, comma. And then we don't have to do any more. Here's the ones, here's the thousands period. So we have 1,500. 1,500, comma, 500. You put a comma after the different, you know, just like over here, you'd say 1,000, comma, 500, 1,000, comma, 500, after the different periods. Let's go over one last example because this one's going to be the trickiest before heading on to our homework. 9 times 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0. So we have our 9. We have our 9. And we're times it from 10 to the 0. 10 to the 0. What does that mean? Well, we're going to do our 9 times our 1, like we have been doing since the past, which is 9. And 10 to the 0 means they do not have a zero behind it. So 10 to the zero is actually one. 10 to the zero is equivalent to one. And we talked about the, in last lesson, anything times one is that number. It's the identity property of multiplication. So nine times one is nine. There's no zero behind it. So if you put a, a line here, you're going to fill it in with no zeros, no zeros. So your final answer is actually 9. 9 times 10 to the 0, 10 to the 0 is 1. And we're going to be playing with that a lot. For instance, 10 to the 1st is 10 with 1 0 is 10. 10 to the 2nd is 1 with 2 zeros. It's 100. And you can see it increasing. 10 to the 0 is 1. 10 to the 1st is 10. 10 to the 2nd is 100. 10 to the third is 1 with 1, 2, 3, 1,000, okay? So hopefully this kind of helps break things down. We can start the actual homework now at this point. And so let's jump into here. Exponent form. Exponent form is the one with the base number of 10 and then a small number to still show how many zeros. So here you can see the base number is 10 and then there is one, there are two, three. Keep in mind that your 10 should be big and then the three should be kind of floating smaller on top. So look at how I did it here. 
the 10 is big and then the 3 is kind of floating at the top right. The third power of 10 is how to say that. Now the answer key doesn't have it on here, but I also want you to add 1,000. Okay. Um, and to show your work, I also want you to show me that it's 1 with 1, 2, 3 zeros, and it's 1,000. And so we're going to make this even more complete than what they're actually asking. For the next problem, we're going to do it in a different color so it's easier to read. 10 times 10 equals... 1 times 1 is 1, and there are 1, 2 zeros, 1, 2 zeros, 100. 100 is 10 with 1, 2 zeros to the second, or a better way to say it, the second power of 10 which is equal to 100. So I kind of want you showing all those steps to show your work. You're going to show you have your base number 10 and you have one, two zeros. One, two zeros. So it's 100 is the same as 10 to the second. So show your work for number three. They're asking for the value. They're kind of asking you for the standard form. Um, if you want to put more forms down just for the kicks and giggles, you may. But 10 to the third is 10, one, two, three times. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. It's the base number 10 being repeated one, two, three times. And so your answer is going to be one times one times one, which is one, with three zeros, one, two, three. Once you finish writing it all out, now you could add your commas. This is the ones, tens, hundreds. After a period of three, you add a comma. So your answer for this is 1,000. I want to do one more with you, and then you could do the rest on your own before we hit the word problems. Four times 10 squared means you're going to have two of them. One, two. You're going to have one zero, two zeros. After you multiply four, times one times one. Four times one times one is four, and you're gonna have one, two zeros. Or two zeros because that's the exponent. This number is, let's see if you need any commas, ones, tens, hundreds, there's no thousand, so your final answer is 400. Okay, I hope you're showing your work and you're really thinking it through to all of them. As you solve 6 through 11 on your own, I want you to just kind of see what question 12 is asking you. The moon is about, um, if, you don't, if you're having trouble saying this, remember this is the ones period. This is the thousands. So say this three digit number, 240. 240,000 miles. The moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth. What is the distance written as a whole number multiplied by a power of 10? And that's kind of like that exponent form that I was saying. A whole number. Where's your whole number here? Here it is right here, 24. And what's the power of 10 you're going to be multiplying by? So they're asking for a whole number. The whole number you're going to use is 24. Multiplied means the multiplication sign. By a power of 10 means 10 to some kind of exponent here. And so I'm not going to give you your final answer, but I will tell you it should look like 24 times 10 to some kind of exponent, and that's where you need to figure it out. What would be equivalent to 240,000? Well, here's your 24 and your 1, and to finish it off, you just need to count how many zeros you need to add to 24 to make the place value now 240,000. And you're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be your small exponent right there. 24 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4th power, or the 4th power of 10. Number 13. The sun is about 93 times 10 to the 6th, or uh, the 6th power of 10 miles from the sun. 
what is this distance written as a whole number? So it's going to be the opposite of what they're asking you for here. Here you had to make it in this form, the whole number and the amount power of 10 multiplied by power of 10. And now you're writing it like a whole number. So what you have to do is solve this to make it look like standard form. What is this in standard form? Let me double check before ending this video for today um, on numbers one and two on the back side. Write the expression that shows three times the sixth power of 10. They want it to look like, the directions is asking you to make it look like a whole number multiplied by a power of 10. So, you know, math English to, English to math English, here they kind of broke it down. They want it to look something like this. So take this phrase and make it look similar to this. Similar to this. Okay, they want it in this kind of format for number one. Number two, Gary mails 10 to the third flowers, flyers, flyers are like males, um, they're advertisements, to clients in one week. Clients are people um, that, you know, hopefully you could work for. Gary mails 10 to the third flyers to clients in one week. How many flyers does Gary mail? So here, are they asking for an expression? Are they asking for an equation? No. They told you this is how much, this is how many flyers. Tell me how many flyers that is in standard form. So what does standard form look like? Standard form looks something like this. And so what I want you to do is make sure for number two, your final answer looks something like this column right here. They do, they're not asking for an equation. They're not asking for a whole number multiplied by a power of 10. They're not asking for word form. They're asking for how much is that? Okay, make sure to read directions carefully and let me know if you have any questions. All right, hope this helps.